Uh, I'm Jerry from the SUSE Labs. Uh, I want to discuss about the uh, one patch data to uh, do the signature verification of the Hibernate Nesha image. So the problem is uh, on a multiple machine, make hacker uh, may, may use any hole in another UEFI trust always maybe Windows or other Linux to modify the Hibernate signature, uh, sorry, Hibernate signature image in swap. Another uh, way is uh, through the user space uh, software suspend, and the user space can take the snapshot of the memory, then modify it, and upload it back to the memory, then trigger the restore. So it's possible some people modify the, uh, the, the, the snapshot image, and then restore it to the current running, uh, current, level, current, uh, current kernel, kernel level to run it. So the idea is from the EG Koshina. Uh, then the EFI upload to generate the key pair, and then pass to the kernel for sign the hypernet image. And the fundamental point is we trust the boot time variable is secure. UEFI boot time variable is secure when UEFI secure boot enable. Uh, because the boot time variable only uh, access uh, available before the easy boot service. So the everything wrong in that stage should already signed and uh, verified by the UEFI secure boot. So it's, it's sure secured. Then we attempt to protect the snapshot image integrity. Yeah. Then our steps. When hypernet, um, shin bootloader will generate is a is when when system boot shin bootloader will generate key pair and put the keys to the uh, non volatile boot time variables. Then EFI stop kernel load this uh, private key before the boot service. Uh, we allocate uh, one uh, memory page and put, put it in, in there. Then Hibernate uh, subsystem copy the private key to an empty page to keep it for sign uh, snapshot image when Hibernate launch. And four, uh, kernel generate the signature of a, a sna uh, snapshot image and put it to the uh, snapshot header. Uh, current, currently, we reserve uh, the mass size of a sna uh, signature is uh, 512 bytes. So is it still enough? Yeah. So then the step of when Hibernate restore. After the Hibernate load the snapshot image from the swap to a temporary memory space, currently it's in the one temporary uh, space to collect the uh, whole the snapshot image from the swap. It's not really uh, uh, restored. So at that moment, the kernel used the uh, public key from the runtime volatile variable. Of course, this public key also generated by the shim to verify the signature that we store in the header. So it uh, can protect the guarantee the uh, whole uh, snapshot image did not modify by Anybody. Then uh, depend. Then the next step is uh, depend on the one flag. One flag. The, the name is a signature enforce. If this flag is off, then is a. I think it's a default. Then we we tie the kernel and the reproduce uh, and the produce a com complaint log when a signature check fail. So uh, user will still can uh, restore. Uh, the, this this is nature image, but the, uh, uh, our mechanism will tie the kernel. Then when when this is nature on, uh, we will direct fail the whole uh, hypernet restore process, and it looks like a one a normal boot. And uh, I think some some people know that uh, they already have a one uh, uh, hardware signature. Uh, provided by ACPI is similar like this. 
this this can nature is uh, when when we suspend and uh, somebody modify the hardware config uh, maybe remove something and the bias found uh, its change it will uh, write the hardware signature to the ACPI is similar like this and the whole whole hibernate process will, will be failed then it looks like the normal boot then the the snake sharp area will be clear. Okay, then how to enable this uh, uh, signature in force? Uh, we use, uh, we, we provide one uh, kernel parameter is a, a snake signature in force, and uh, maybe bootloader can change it. Another is a direct set the kernel config uh, to enable uh, UEFI security boot. To, to bind this uh, flag with the UEFI security boot. Yeah. So when, if, uh, uh, so if we enable this uh, config, then it will detect the UEFI security boot. It's based on module's page. Uh, detect the UEFI security boot. If it enabled, then it will direct uh, enforce a signature should be passed. But it depend, yeah, depend on your, your requirement. Okay, then uh, they'll have two uh, EFI variable. Uh, it's provided to the kernel talk with the, uh, the key from, uh, the, to take the key from the bootload. Uh, the first, the GUID is, uh, this one is, uh, is uh, we choose the, is, is just a random chain generator. And uh, uh, the first key is a S4 sign key, is a private key. It's a put time number type. Uh, variable and uh, the, the format is a PKCS8 uh, is a, in, currently only supported uncompressed uh, private key format but it's okay because uh, at that moment that stage is so secure another key is a S4 wake key is a, a public key is a runtime uh, value type uh, variable of course the um, it, it should copy from the bootloader should copy from the so copy the public key from the uh, bottom variable to, to runtime variable. And uh, the format is the X509 uh, format. Yeah. And when Xun, when Xun should uh, generate the keys, I uh, have two, uh, two times Xun will generate the key. The, fir the first is uh, when uh, system boot and Xun did not find uh, any key pair, then it will generate the key pair. Another, uh, another situation is the when Shun find the, the gen S4 key flag, this, uh, this is an uh, EFI variable from the kernel, then it will regenerate the key, the key pair. Uh, if the key pair can regenerate for every, in every time boot, that will be more uh, secure uh, because we, we use a session key, almost like a session key to sign the, the uh, snapshots. And the kernel will delete, delete this flag to the, uh, uh, in a system boot. And uh, this, this variable also can, over, uh, can write by the uh, user space. So user space tool also can tell the bootloader to return it, the key pair. A kernel, kernel will not uh, override the uh, user space label, the uh, value. Then implementation parts, um, we have three parts. The first is a key pair generator in Shim. The other, other is a uh, Gary Lin there. And currently the, the source code is in, uh, in uh, GitHub. And another part is a uh, Asymmetric keys in kernel. Uh, we implement uh, uh, the PKCSA and the PKCS1 ISA private key parser. Uh, extend uh, David Howard's work. Uh, we we implement the parser to pa passing the uh, private key. And the, yep. Why did you use uh, PKCSA? Uh, PKCS Uh, mm, 
currently the uh, kernel did not provide the, the public key parser. So um, it only have the public key parser. And the PKCSA is the, um, the simplest co container to collect the uh, public key. So uh, originally my implementation is just a passing, the repassing the public key, but it's just a, some uh, binary blob. You cannot uh, in a, uh, re recognize what, what the real uh, private key. So we need one container. The PKCS8 is the uh, simplest container. Okay. Okay, and another uh, function is we, add, we added the uh, signature generation API and uh, implement the signature generation logic uh, in the, uh, sorry, in the asymmetry keys is follow the PKCS one. Currently, the kernel only have the uh, signature verification pass, but no generation pass. So, so we, we implement it. Then uh, the third part is uh, Hibernate. Uh, we, we change the Hibernate subsystem in kernel, uh, add one config for uh, enable the snapshot verification and maintain, we will maintain a forward the uh, private key. Uh, the private key is loaded in the, from the EFI stop. So we need to forward it to, uh, when, when we uh, restore the kernel, the kernel will find the boot, boot kernel to the uh, restore the cut, resume target kernel. So the whole memory will erase, uh, will, will switch the, the old status. So we need to forward the private key from the boot kernel to the JSON target kernel. The other way is the uh, reserve one uh, empty page in the snapshot image. Then uh, we, when, we, uh, when we load the snapshot image to, uh, from the swap to the uh, memory, then we write the private key to this uh, empty page in snapshot then re restore. So the uh, target, uh, re recent target kernel can also get the private key.
Oh, I like Okay. Have a question? Invariable. Yeah. So because uh, it's a bit still maintained by the um, put order in the is is also stored in the put time variable is a number type, but it will copy to the uh, runtime uh, volatile variable. Uh, the the variable this variable cannot be changed or modified in in runtime, so it's the is it in Is it 
Performance. Yeah, we uh, we tested the actually is a fundamental problem. The is from the hash algorithm. The performance is now pretty good for the one big image. The face of the Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe if the is go up to the three gigabyte, maybe for for this case will be wasted the uh, twenty five seconds to verify. But we, we tested on the two machines, all the Intel, uh, Intel uh, 64-bit machine. And uh, fortunately, the, uh, in, in uh, 3.10 kernel, uh, have a new patch to support the SSE 3 and the ABS, ABS2 uh, instruction. So it's, a more, it's a faster. So, so Compared with the different uh, hash, the, the SHA one is a uh, 2.5 times of the SHA 256. Yeah, as you see, and the uh, SHA 512 is uh, 1.4 times of uh, SHA 256. It's on the uh, 64 bits system. So on 64 speed system, the, the user SHA uh, 512 is better. Actually, the, the speed is even better than the uh, SHA 256. So the, it's a one summary. Uh, maybe if the snapshot image is, is, pretty, is big, maybe go up to the three gigabyte. I'm, I'm not really actually to test it, but to, to have the machine already uh, consume as three gigabyte. Yeah, but uh, if calculate it, maybe need, uh, need uh, this, this time. And uh, the first solution is the user SHA one, so uh, need uh, five seconds to verify. Hmm.
Yep. Wait a wait a minute. Okay, we have, we've got about 15 minutes left, maybe 10. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you want to finish up? Mm, let me see. Okay, now currently we send out a version 4 page and uh, I have, um, have following a kernel experts already give a suggestion and I'm fixing and uh, like my boss say, we found uh, almost a uh, health work don't need it. <laughs> so uh, maybe a next, uh, next uh, version we will uh, mo we will put some other solution to like the similar key, yeah, to to implement this. Then we can don't we don't need use the assembly key, yeah, just. Uh, just use as a wiki, yeah. So we will try it. So I have some to do list. Uh, uh, I will implement the uh, Demerty uh, Kasakin's uh, suggestion. Uh, uh, he suggests me uh, some, uh, give me some suggestion of the assembly key, and I will modify it. And uh, maybe uh, remove the kernel config for a uh, user can select what uh, hash algorithm they can use. Yeah. So maybe the red use the uh, SHA uh, 512. And the function A is uh, kernel uh, will pass the uh, random number C to the bloater. Uh, as we know, the bloater have no uh, the pool to, uh, to get the good uh, random number, random value. So uh, our thinking is uh, pass the, the this seed through the EFI variable to the uh, bloater, then bloater can use it to generate a key, or if we don't use the assembly key, then EFI stop can generate uh, AES key for, uh, for encrypt. And uh, maybe uh, we, we can uh, implement encrypt 
uh, Sinesha image, maybe, before sign it. I'm not sure it, anybody want it. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's a, that because of performance, yeah. If a performance, performance is good enough, then we can do anything to protect it and give it a, it a very high level, security level, high security level. Uh, so maybe some people want to include it. That's all my present, yeah. Thank you. You mean the user encrypt? comment was um, the key rings that the kernel keeps when you write out the hibernate image all those keys are written out in the hibernate image and if they're not encrypted right. then you can get them yeah not the UEFI keys Okay. Okay. I thank think you. That's it. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming.